Hello, I'm Richard Reed, President of HVACforbeginners.com. We welcome you to another one of our uh, instructional videos. We just hope that uh, it is a great help to you. Uh, feel free to use this. Uh, we ask that it not be used for commercial purposes or embedded on other people or companies' websites. Thank you. Hello, your air conditioning maintenance begins with uh, checking or replacing your air filter. And uh, many furnaces, it's simply a matter of removing the doors. Uh, this is an upflow furnace, so the filter will be in the bottom here. Remove the doors, and you slide the filter out. This furnace has, uh, has the pleated type of filter and it's uh, due for a change. Uh, it's a simple matter of replacing it. One with the same kind. Put her in. There's an arrow on the end of the filters that uh, shows you the direction that goes in. Right here you'll see the arrow. That arrow points to the uh, to the inside of the furnace. It's just a simple matter of placing the new one in, sliding it in, and putting the doors back on. Other places uh, you might find the filter is in a return grill in the ceiling, usually in a hallway, or it could be in a wall. And on some furnaces there will be a slot uh, beside the furnace in the ductwork. You just slide the filter out. Same basic principle. But that's the, uh, that's the place to start your air conditioner maintenance. The next part of your air conditioner maintenance is the checking the electrical components in the outside unit. Uh, before you do this, you should ensure that the, the power is shut off to the unit. Simple matter of shutting the power off, then uh, removing the screws to the access. Usually they're 5 16 screws or quarter inch. Simple matter of removing them. And remove the door. This is a pretty basic air conditioner here. You see the contactor and there's the run capacitor. Uh, basically after you shut the power off get the access to the cover you want to uh, check to make sure the power is off. The easiest way to do it is to push on the contactor make sure it doesn't come on. If it doesn't come on then the power is off. Then you want to check all the connections to make sure they're tight. It's easy to do with a nut driver or a screwdriver. Just snug them up, make sure they're tight. And you, at this time you also want to take a look at the contactor. Make sure it's in good shape. And you also want to uh, check your run capacitor. Make sure it's within the specifications of it. So, oh, now we're going to look at contactors. This is a typical contactor found in an air conditioner. This is a two-pole 40 amp contactor, which is the ratings of it. The two-pole means there's two movable contacts. Uh, the way that, it, that any contactor works is a control voltage is supplied to it. Uh, residential system typically come 24 volts coming from the thermostat goes to a coil. A wire. The coil of wire, when power is supplied to it, produces a magnetic field. There's a plunger inside here that uh, when the coil produces a magnetic field, it attracts the pl metal plunger. And that plunger is connected to these movable contacts. When the plunger moves, the contacts move, causing them to close, just like that. Um, contact Contactors are rated according to their control voltage, 24 volts, 120 volts, etc. They're also uh, rated according to the voltage that they will carry for the load, as well as the amps that the, the load can draw. 
Uh, another type is a single pole contactor. The, as you can see the main difference of them is one of the movable contacts is replaced by just a bus bar connecting the two different contact points. The uh, normal part of air conditioner maintenance is to uh, check the movable and fixed contacts, make sure they're not burnt, bent, charred, kind of melted looking. That'll happen over time. Uh, if it is, it should be replaced. The normal problems that you'll have with a contactor will be one of two types. You'll have a mechanical failure, which is normally caused by when it's not replaced with bad contacts. What will happen then is uh, when the contacts close, they'll draw excessive current and will actually arc and basically weld the fixed and movable contacts together. And then uh, they'll it'll just stay that way. The plunger won't go back to normal whenever the thermostat tells it to stop. You'll usually notice it with the fact that uh, you cannot uh, shut your air conditioner off at the thermostat. The only way you can shut it off is turn the power off to the air conditioner. Uh, the electrical way that the contactor can fail is usually the coil will go bad. It's uh, simple to check with a simple volt ohm meter. Set it for resistance. Put uh, one lead on each of the connectors for the coil. Take a resistance reading. Your typical reading will be between 10 and 20 ohms on uh, one of these contactors. If it's significantly different, then the contactor should be replaced. Uh, if you uh, have problems and you call a repairman out to, uh, to find and replace this, it's going to cost you anywhere from $150 to $200 or more, depending on uh, the time of day that it happens. Uh, you can buy these for less than $50 and do it yourself with some simple safety precautions. Like, uh, first thing you do, shut off the power to the air conditioner. Make sure it's off. Verify it with the meter, make sure it's off. Simple replacement, just mark the wires that are connected to each terminal and uh, where they go. Disconnect them, remove the old contactor, put the new one in place, put the wires back where you took them off, turn the power back on, do an operational check, make sure it works. Save you a lot of money doing it yourself. Hope it's been a help. Well, now we're going to talk about capacitors. Uh, this is a run capacitor. Uh, it's found typically on uh, blower motors on the furnace or sometimes for uh, the run capacitors on the condenser fan motors on the air conditioning. Uh, usually printed on the side of them. They will have uh, their capacitor rating in microfarads and the voltages that they're good for. Plus, they will have a uh, rating on them with a plus or minus and a percentage, typically five or six, and that gives you the specifications for uh, the capacitor, tell whether it's good or bad. Uh, here's another type. This is a dual run capacitor. Uh, it's typically used on a uh, air conditioner. Uh, one of the capacitors is uh, for the compressor and one of them is for the fan motor in the air conditioner. It has three terminals. There's a C terminal which is common, is used for both the fan motor and the compressor. Uh, then there's a fan terminal which is used for the capacitor for the condenser fan motor. And there is a HERM terminal which uh, stands for Hermetic which is for the compressor run capacitor. Uh, Typically, on an air conditioning problem, uh, if you see the top of the uh, capacitor bulging or a fluid, like an oily fluid leaking out of them, that's a sign that it's bad. Uh, typically, the top of them will just be bulged out. Uh, another way to uh, test them is uh, with a simple volt ohm meter. Uh, such as this. Uh, they typically have a capacitance setting on them. That's a simple matter of setting the meter to the capacitance 
bevel and then just uh, put one terminal on each side of the capacitor and the meter will show you the capacitance and you just compare the reading that you got with uh, the ratings on the side of it and make sure it's within the plus or minus percent if it's not then uh, it should be replaced we hope this has been a help your air conditioner maintenance is cleaning the outside coil it's simply a matter of using a garden hose with a nozzle on it you just have to be careful so that you don't uh, use too much pressure you don't want to blow directly on it you don't want to bend these fins well, you simply wash it from top to bottom, wash out all the dirt and stuff, make sure the coil is clean all the way around. The next part of your air conditioner maintenance is uh, checking your thermostat, especially if you have an older mechanical type thermostat. Uh, begin by shutting the power off to your furnace and your air conditioner. And then if you have the old mechanical type, remove the face plate here by just pulling on it. And there's a couple of pegs on the top of it. With the small level, you put it on top of the pegs and read the level, make sure it's perfectly level. If they're not perfectly level, they will just not work right. It, it will throw off the temperature that it comes on and off. It uh, costs you uh, quite a bit of money. If it's not level, you have three screws that you have to move, remove. And the thermostat itself comes off. And you'll see on the top there, there's a little vial of mercury in these things. So you, when you replace them or anything, you can't just throw them away. They need to be properly disposed of. Uh, you'll see on most thermostats, you'll have a red, a red, a white, a yellow, a green, and sometimes a blue wire. And uh, if you need to level the thermostat, there's usually two or three mounting screws, like here and here. You, you loosen the screws, put your level on the pegs on the top, and get it back in level and tighten up the screws. It's a simple matter. Uh, we recommend if you have a mechanical thermostat like this, uh, you go ahead and replace it. You save five to ten percent on your heating and cooling bills. They're inexpensive. It's easy to do.